So historical biogeography is the area of ecology that examines patterns of diversity across the surface of the globe. It's a combination of geographical ecology, the study of patterns in space, and historical ecology, the study of patterns over time. We know that plants appeared long after trilobites existed. Trilobites, ancient marine mam animals, the fossil shown at the right. In general, we can say that diversity has increased over geologic time. Here is the geological time scale, which certain scientists like to remember, memorize. I find I can remember some of the dates that have to do with plants and some insects that I'm most interested in. But basically three eras. We are currently in the Cenozoic era. Many periods within each era and epochs, but probably these are what are most useful biologically to talk about. Interesting questions to me are why are some kinds of organisms only found in one part of the world? And also, how can some lineages be widespread and others restricted to particular places? For example, hummingbirds, the cutest, most wonderful birds that feed while hovering in air, Here's the mother hummingbird on the left feeding her babies in a little nest made of spider webs and lichens. They are only found in the Western Hemisphere in the New World. And bats are found around the world, but the larger bats, the Megachiroptera, very cute because they are, look like flying foxes with very sweet faces. These are important pollinators and seed dispersers, but only of plants that live in the Eastern Hemisphere or the Old World. And in the large island country of Australia, there are many unique plants and animals. The eucalyptuses and things in the Myrtaceae family, the bottle brushes, and on the right, the Proteaceae. And of course, marsupials, the biggest, most interesting maybe are the kangaroos. These are mammals, but not with a placenta and maturing the baby inside. Instead, marsupials who give birth to very small babies that crawl into a pouch where they are have sort of external gestation. And there are some distinctive birds, too, only found in Australia, like the kookaburra. The trogons are diverse in the Americas. Here's the Quetzal, the most the resplendent Quetzal with the beautiful long tail feathers. The male with the fuzzy green head shown here eating a caterpillar. Their diversity is greatest in the New World, though there are Old World trogons as well. Here's a trogon of Mount Kinabalu, beautiful chubby birds. They love to eat oil-rich fruit. So some things, like the Quetzals liking to eat oil-rich fruit, are phylogenetic effects, which are characteristics shared by a lineage, irrespective of environmental factors. This is also called parallelism, origin from common ancestor or common traits. This is a contrasted with convergence, which is similarity in form and function that evolves under similar environmental conditions, even though the organisms displaying these similar characters are from different lineages and very different origins. In this picture, we can see examples of convergence of unrelated mammals of African on the left, and South American rainforests on the right. The pygmy hippo of Africa, kind of similar in shape and size and food to the capybara. The chevrotain, similar to the paca, even similar in their markings. And on the left, the royal antelope from Africa, similar to the agouti. 
a rodent. Here are a couple other examples, the yellowback diker and the brocket deer of the new world, the pangolin of the old world, and the armadillo of the new world. Convergence happens because of adaptation to fill available niches. And here's another example I want you to think about. In American habitats, we have mammals that are placental mammals. A large grazing herbivore is a horse, a rooting omnivore, a pig, an arboreal herbivore would be the slow-moving sloth, and little terrestrial seed eaters and pollinators can be mice. Here are some marsupial mammals in Australia, so I want you to think about which of these is convergent with the horse the pig, the sloth, and the mouse. In many unrelated groups of birds, there's convergence in bill shape, morphology, for extracting insects from wood, long, uh, elongate, pointed bills of different shapes and sizes, and the little bird on the left shown using a tool, a stick. All over the world, parrots fill many niches. Some, some places they've evolved to be terrestrial, living in the ground, other places in the trees, usually eating seeds. Here's some beautiful rainbow lorikeets in the branches of a tree in Australia. As beautiful and colorful as these guys look, they're very common there, just like mockingbirds or cardinals might be here in Miami.